this video we're going to take a look at narrow versus wideband pagers. The graphic here illustrates the differences. This is a channel and this is a, another channel. In this example it's channel 155.5 megahertz and then adjacent channel to it is 155.525 megahertz. Each channel is 25 kilohertz wide and that means there's data or there's a transmission that extends this whole 25 kilohertz. If you notice there's really no gap between the two channels. Um, this channel kind of butts up against this channel. And the purpose of a receiver is to receive just this block from here to here of this frequency. You don't want your receiver receiving anything from the adjacent channel. So all the receivers have built into them a band limiter where it, it picks up a certain bandwidth. In this case it's 25 kilohertz. It prevents this pager, if it was on this frequency, from picking up this pager on this frequencies. What narrowband does is it adds a additional channel in between and it reduces the bandwidth of the uh, transmitter from 25 kilohertz down to 12 and a half kilohertz. And what this does is it allows a extra channel in between existing channels. The problem we're going to come up with is when your pager receives 25 kilohertz and the 25 kilohertz goes across and picks up the adjacent channel which just came into existence next to yours. This extra channel which is in between your old channel and the channel next to you didn't exist a few years ago. So what the new narrowband pagers do is they only receive a transmission of 12 and a half kilohertz instead of the old 25 kilohertz. So the new pager set at 12 and a half will only receive from here to here. It will not receive any transmissions from the new channel which might be next to you. Do you really need to go to narrowband for your pagers? That's the question. Most likely you have no new channel here. It's very unlikely that the FCC would have allocated a frequency right next to yours immediately after going to narrowband unless you were in a congested area or area that had a lot of channels that were already in use you could have a transmitter right next to your frequency and if that's the case your old wideband pagers could receive a little bit of this signal which is adjacent to your frequency. Most likely that's not the case and you can continue to use your wideband pagers until there's a new channel which is put in next to your channel. If you're out in the middle of nowhere that could take years, it could take 10 years, 20 years. It's hard to say exactly when a channel would be put in next to yours and in close proximity to your receiver. In other words your pager. It doesn't matter if a channel is put in next to yours but the channel is very far away you know it's 20, 30, 50 miles away and it's a low wattage channel. What is going to happen is if you this channel is put in next to your channel it's at a fairly high wattage and it is received fairly strongly by your pager. This channel here can bleed over into your pager and you can hear a bit of this transmission. It, might, it most likely will sound garbled. It might sound um, very weak and you might not even notice it most of the time but occasionally you may get some transmission leak over from this new frequency into your frequency. So here's a picture of a minute or four pager. All the minute or threes and the minute or fours are wideband pager that none of the pagers were ever made in narrowband. The pagers themselves will work just fine on narrowband. Um, you don't need to do anything whatsoever to the pager. 
to make it work on narrowband. The pager itself really doesn't use the entire 25 kilohertz bandwidth. It only uses a smaller portion of it. And so the audio signal coming across the pager will be just fine if you're transmitting on narrowband. Um, it's unlikely that you'll even notice anything at all once you switch from wideband to narrowband if you're using the old wideband pagers. So there's no need for any type of concern. If you have these old pagers, um, they should work just fine for you. The only problem you may come up with, which I explained in the last slide, is if a adjacent channel is put in next to yours and begins transmitting. This pager has the possibility of picking up that adjacent channel to yours. You'll know it if it happens because you'll start getting uh, garbled messages, you'll start um, getting static, you may even pick up a little bit of the transmission of this transmitter that's next to yours. If that happens, there's nothing really you can do about it. You're going to need to get new pagers because these are all going to be wideband pagers and there's really no effective way to make them narrowband. So some of the questions uh, that are often asked about um, making your pagers go from wide to narrow or narrow to wide and especially the Minitor 3 and 4 pagers are will the Minitor 3 and 4 pagers work on a narrowband system? The answer is yes, they will work just fine. Um, you should not be concerned about using your 3's and 4's on a narrowband system. If there is an issue, you'll know it. You'll hear the um, traffic of the neighboring channel onto your pager and if that's the case then yes you do need to get new equipment and you'll need to stop using your wideband pagers. Most likely you'll n never notice that or it's very unlikely to happen anytime soon if you're in an area that is not built up. In other words if you're out in the middle of nowhere not there are not going to be very many transmitters in your area, there's not going to be a whole lot of traffic in your area, and it's unlikely that someone's going to put a channel right next to yours. If you're in a congested area, if you're in an area with a high population, then yes, it's very possible and likely that someone will put a channel next to your current channel, and that could cause a problem with your pager. But for the time being, there's no reason to panic, no reason to be concerned with your Minitor 3's and 4's. They'll work just fine on a narrowband system. So the next question is, should we continue to use our Minitor 3 and 4 pagers even though our transmitter is on narrowband? Well, that's what I just went over a little bit um, prior to this question, is yes, you should continue to use your 3 and 4 pagers. Um, you'll notice absolutely no difference whatsoever between the wide and narrow band system. The pagers will receive just as before and um, you'll never even know it's on narrow band. Now one of the concerns, um, which is a legitimate concern, is will you get in trouble from the FCC for using wide band pagers? The answer is no. The FCC is not going to care about your pagers. The FCC is concerned with the transmitters. So you need to make sure all your transmitters are on narrow band. The problem is if your transmitter is on wideband, your transmitter could leak over into the adjacent channel next to you and that could get you in big trouble. So if you have any type of transmitter, whether it be a portable radio, a mobile radio, a base station, you need to make sure every transmitter you have is on narrow band or you could be in trouble from the FCC. But on the pagers, the pagers are just a receiver and they don't care at all about the receivers. Technically, yes, you should have a narrow band receiver, but are you going to get in trouble? No. There's, there's no way you're going to get in trouble for using a narrow band receiver. This may come as a surprise to a lot of people watching this video. 90% of all the Minitor 5's are still on wideband. Now the Minitor 5 pager is programmable for either narrow or wideband 
And the Miniature 5 has been out for quite a few years before uh, the mandate to switch to narrowband. Nearly 90% or a little bit over 90% I would estimate of Miniature 5s are still on wideband. And how do, how do I know this? We get these in our repair shop all the time from all the customers all across the country. And nearly every single one that we read is programmed wideband. Yet people use these pagers. There's no concern whatsoever from the users that these are actually wideband. In other words, these Miniature Fives are programmed to wideband exactly like the Miniature Threes and exactly like the Miniature Fours. You can take a three, you can take a four, and you can take a five, and you can hold them beside each other and they'll work exactly the same. And the Miniature Five are, is most likely going to be programmed for wideband. So right now, uh, if you do have some Miniature Fives and you do have the programmer, it'd be a good idea to check your Miniature Fives, reprogram them to narrowband, because you never know when you might have a transmitter on the channel that's adjacent to yours. If that happens, and it could happen at any moment, it could happen next week, it could happen next year, it could take 10 years, it could take 20 years. You don't know when that might happen, but it'd be a good idea just to go ahead and program your Miniature Fives to narrowband. That way you don't have to worry about it. But the point of this slide is to show you that 90% of all the Miniature Fives are actually wideband, <laughs> even though they're programmable for either, and yet people are concerned with threes and fours being wideband. Threes and fours are wideband? Well, guess what? 90% of the Miniature Fives are also wideband, yet no one seems to be concerned whatsoever about those. And that's because the Miniature Fives are sold as wide or narrow. That means they could be one or the other, not both. So if you have a Miniature 5, it's very, very likely your Miniature 5 is on wideband. And so you should have no concern whatsoever about using a 3 or 4 on wideband if you're using a Miniature 5 on wideband. If you want some more information about narrow or wideband, you can find it on our website at pwservice.com. We also sell new Miniature 6s, which just came out. The Miniature 6s can be programmed for narrow or wide. All the Miniature 6s we sell are going to go out on narrow band. And if you have any questions or if you're interested in the Miniature 6, you can give us a call at 800-822-2180.